first of all, thank you so much for your hard work this week. Um, I really appreciate you guys showing up and coming. And I just wanted to say that when I was your age, I don't know if I could do this as responsibly and well as you guys have been doing remote learning. Um, so I'm just really proud of you guys. So just know that, okay? Um, I want to quickly go over yesterday's lesson and then we'll jump into today. Sound cool? So you can follow along on my screen or if you want, you can pull this up on your own. Let's see. So yesterday we finished the movie um, and I just wanted to quickly kind of go over, did we have a chance in this class in particular, did we have a chance to go over the ending? No, I think that our class didn't get a chance to I, do that. I thought we did. Okay, let's review Yeah, we it. did. We did? Okay. So just to review, I guess, for assignments for the week, um, for this new module, um, you had on Monday the elements of drama assignment. And remember, you can always redo that and resubmit, right? So you can use these textbook pages in Monday's module, as well as the YouTube video that was in the assignment to complete that. Awesome job, Peyton, that's great. Um, and then Tuesday, you we started the movie, nothing to turn in on Tuesday. Wednesday, you had your Christmas Carol intro uh, presentation. And then um, Wednesday, we had the, I'm sorry, Wednesday, we had the connotation and denotation. Um, some students were confused about connotation or like the feeling that a word gives. And we said there could be positive, negative, and some words are even neutral. Um, if you were confused about that, I made a YouTube video and it's on my channel. Um, so feel free to check that out. And then yesterday, hopefully you finished and submitted your movie viewing guide. Um, if you did not finish that, just make sure you get that done. Everybody, that should be easy points for you because you can just copy off the answer key. So if you missed a video or part of the video, or that middle section, you know, we didn't watch. We watched the beginning or the exposition. I'm gonna use our plot words. We missed kind of like that climax, the conflict with the ghosts. And then we saw the end or the resolution. So you can go back and fill that in, okay? Are there any questions about this week's assignment so far at all? You feel pretty good? Awesome. So today we have a really cool assignment. You guys are we're gonna really like this because it's all about you and your interests and what you want to pick so today we do have our etymology quiz i will tell you my students in all my classes today have like done like they've blown it out of the water they've done such a good job i think one of my classes had 14 a pluses so they did a terrific job so you guys are going to kill this today in the best way before you take that i want to explain the assignment today so again you can click um, the Christmas Carol Victorian London assignment, or you can follow along here. I quickly want to go over like why the heck we're doing this. I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I always asked my teachers like, why should I care about this? Like, why do I need to know this? Right? So our objectives today, these are the statements that I can statements that you guys should be able to say like, yes, I can do this when you leave class today. So the first one, I can define the following words, plot. What is plot? What does that mean? Anybody know? It's like the sequence of events in a story. Excellent. Anyone want to add to that? There's the plot diagram, right? Excellent, Isabel. I'll give you is a it, is it Yeah. Technology week nine. Yes, that's our quiz today. Yep. For that, though, Isabel, snaps. Crackle, pop for you, girl. Awesome job. Um, what's the setting? Today, that's like our huge, big focus, is today we're going to figure out, okay, how does the setting of a story um, impact the characters in the story? What does a setting mean? Anybody know? It's where a play, like, it's where, where the scene, ha like, what's in the background, like, in the scene, that's like the setting. Sure. That's great, Gage. Anybody else want to add to that? It's where something takes place. Yeah, exactly. So it's like the whole background, the environment, right? That's what you're saying, Gage, like the environment. 
but also where it takes place. Our story takes place in London, England in the 1800s and like the 1840s. Our story was published in 1843. So for today's assignment, you're going to pick a topic to research about that time period. And I'll tell you, is this story, remember we talked about, is it like a feel good Christmas story with like happiness all around? No, that's right. No. Yeah, no, it's not. It's a gothic piece of literature, meaning it is dark and macabre and creepy. So we're gonna learn that the setting of the story and what was happening in history during this time makes the story really dark and creepy because it wasn't a pleasant time to be alive. Um, let's see, if I ask you to cite textual evidence, I say that a lot, but what do I mean by that when you're citing textual evidence? Getting a piece of evidence or textual evidence from a place in the book or a quote. A quote. Excellent. So students, when we're getting a quote from the story, do we put it in our own words or do we copy it word for word? We copy it word for word. Yes. And then we need to add the author's last name after it, right? Why do we do that? Why do we put the author's last name? What's like the point? Anybody know why we do that? For copyright pur pur for copyright purposes. <laughs> You're close. I love that you guessed. So for your brave guess, snaps, crackle, pop for you. Have you guys heard of the word plagiarism or to plagiarize something? Yeah. Yeah, it's when you like copy another person's like saying. Yes. And you copy it, and if you don't cite it, meaning if you copy something word for word and you don't put the author last name, you're saying that that's your words. So if I were writing a paper and I made a cop I copied a, a piece of dialogue or a sentence or a quote from William Shakespeare and I didn't put Shakespeare at the end, I'm saying that's my work and it's not, right? Which is stealing, it's plagiarism. So we have to make sure today that we're gonna write in our own words, right? Lastly, I want us to think about what summary means because we're gonna have to summarize. Today, number two, you're going to draw a conclusion or make a new idea and summarize research in your own words. If you saw a movie at the movie theater and your friend said, hey, what's that movie about? It looked really good, I wanna see it. What would you say? How do you summarize something? You kind of just recap it. Great job. You would recap it. For that, Isabel snaps, crackles, pops. So we're going to go into how, you, how I want you to recap it, or just like a basic way to write a summary. Everybody with me so far? So basically, I just showed you why we're doing what we're doing. Now, let's look at the assignment. Victorian Britain was a time named for the reign of Queen Victoria, she was queen from 1837 until 1901. She was only 18 when she became the queen. Can you imagine being a queen or a king at 18 years old? What? What's up, Aiden? That's crazy. That's so young. I feel like I could not run a country, and I'm 28. So I don't know if an 18-year-old could. But she did. She ruled from 1837 until 1901. And our story takes place kind of right in the in-between in 1843. So many of the events, though, that we, we think about with this era, like if people are historians, they say, oh, the Victorian era, that's when we had factories. And there was something called um, the Industrial Revolution, where machines were being made and people were making mass production of things in factories. But it says that had not happened yet, but this time is still a time of many changes. So what you're going to do, do you guys see this list of topics? See this big list over here? You're going to pick one. How many topics are you going to pick? One. One. One, one. yep. So you can choose from the following. Queen Victoria, you can research about her, which could be cool. Victorian funerals and mourning. So look how this is spelled. It's M-O-U-R-I-N-G. So it's not like morning, like good morning, right? It's mourning. What does that mean, mourning? 
if you were at a funeral and they say you're in mourning. You're kind of grieving over someone's death. Yes. I loved one of my students earlier said, but it's also a celebration of life. And I was like, ooh, I like that too. But yes, it's like you're in the grieving process, right? You're you're dealing with the emotions that come with someone passing away. So you could research about that if you're feeling a little macabre, a little scary, a little spoopy. That sounds fun to research about. Yes, if you're feeling a little spoopy. Oh, Abigail, you're big into paranormal stuff, aren't you, right? Yeah. Um, you can research about the counting house. That is the place where Scrooge works at in the story. So you can look at to what that was. Victorian workhouses. You can look at the poor law of 1834. It's kind of cool. But even cooler, if I was doing this project, this is what I would research. Prisons and the penal treadmill. If you've never heard of the penal treadmill, poor people literally had to go on a treadmill. Research it. It's really cool. You can um, research the Victorian monetary system, but this is a bit confusing. It says, make it understandable. What is the cost of a loaf of bread? What does a secretary make? You don't have to find those exact answers in your research. This, um, the articles that you might read about the Victorian monetary system might tell you prices of different things. So you don't have to have like the price of bread, but if it says the price of anything else, just make sure you mention that. Thumbs up if you're cool with that. You guys get cool. You can research about penance, which is like a religious concept. Maybe you guys have heard of that. Um, you can look up a Victorian boarding school. Who, who, what character in our story was, was at a boarding school? Do we remember? Scrooge when he was a young boy. Mm-hmm. Scrooge is a young boy. It's okay, Aiden. I'm glad you're here. We are going over um, the assignment for today. So you're going to be doing a research assignment, and I'm going over the topics that you can pick from, okay? So you didn't miss too much. Yes, but Scrooge is a young boy. was in a boarding school. You could research ragged schools. That's like a second cool topic that if I was doing this, I would pick ragged schools. Those are kind of cool. You can research about a Victorian apprenticeship. So Scrooge also had an apprenticeship. Do people still have apprenticeships now? Yes. Yeah. Especially for trades. So, for example, um, my brother wanted to be, like, an electrician. So he would have to do an electrician, like, apprenticeship. So it's still very big in trades. You can research pawn shops, Victorian foods, like gruel. Ugh. Does that sound good? Would you want to eat something that's called gruel? No. <laughs> no. Uh, plum pudding. That was like a holiday treat. Some people, I think, still have a form of that. Grog or smoking bishops. You can research those foods and check that out. You can also look at Victorian public health and cholera. Have any of you heard of cholera before? Do you know what that might be? A disease of some sort? It is a disease. So when I visited Kenya... Um, they have different diseases there because their health care is not the same, right? And depending on where you are geographically in the world, you're more susceptible to different diseases based on, like, the wildlife and the environment. But cholera is a disease that you can get from drinking unclean water. So it's pretty cool if you're, like, creepy and spoopy. It's cool to learn about those things. Um, Victorian London pollution that had a lot to deal with people getting sick or them dying, especially if you were poor. And then Victorian jobs for children is something you could research. What was one of the Victorian jobs for children that we had talked about in our introduction? Do we remember? It was a dirty job. Coal mines. Yes, excellent job. Snaps, crackle, pop for you, Austin. Awesome work. So you can click this link. And it's going to give you a list of all of these websites for each topic. So see how it says like Victorian London pollution. If you were to pick this topic, you can go to these websites to um, research. So you do not have to go to Google and say like, hmm, is this a reputable source? Is it not a reputable source? What do I mean by that reputable source? What does that mean? Is it reliable or not? Ooh, so good. Snaps, crackles, pop for you guys. Awesome job. Yes, is it reliable? So you already have reliable sources here to use. So now, okay, 
you pick your topic, you read the article, then what the heck do you do? You have to summarize your article. So what is, we talked about what a summary is, but these are the questions. I've had students all day say, Mrs. Finner, how many sentences does my summary need to be? What do you think I would say? Five to six. Here's the trick. I love that you answered, Isabel. Snaps, crackle, pop. However many questions there are. Yes! Plus a conclusion. Yes, why it snaps, crackle, pop. Just like any constructed response paragraph that we've done, remember, I'm only looking for, do you have each piece of what we need? Remember, if you have a rubric, you need each piece of that rubric, right? So this is what I'm looking for for your summary. You need to state the main idea or the main ideas of the article. If you don't know how to do that, these are the questions I need you to think about. You guys ready? I need you to think about who is the article about or who does the article talk about or involve? Okay, that's something you can answer in your summary. In your summary, you can answer what are the people or subjects doing? So what do they do? You should uh, state when the events in the article took place. Everyone should have obviously a similar answer. Where did the events take place? Again, everyone will have a similar answer. And lastly, why is it important? Why should you care, right? Why was it important? Um, you can also find details that help support that, but that's what you're going to do. This is what you also need. So three pieces in your discussion post. You need the summary piece, okay? Then you need to start your post with a sentence that states what your topic is, okay? For example, I if I picked Queen Victoria, I would say, I'm going to write about Queen Victoria, okay? Lastly, after your summary, you need to write separately five facts that you learned, okay? So would you guys like to see a good student example of this to show you? Yeah. I'll show you. So Miss Kennedy gave me permission, and she had an awesome example. So let's look at hers. If yours is similar, you're going to do really well with this. Here's Kennedy's. So remember, we need a sentence that says what your post is about, what topic you chose, a summary that answers the who, what, where, when, why questions, and you need five um, facts. So here's what Kennedy wrote. She said, my post is going to be about Victorian jobs for children. So she, did she have her um, introductory sentence? Yep, she had that. Now let's see her summary. So that's her intro. In the 1800s, kids were involved in many horrible, dangerous jobs, including trappers, coal bearers, working in pits, and more. These jobs included males and females from the youngest age I found, which is eight in all ages up. These children barely got paid for these horrible jobs and did not get treated well. These children are forced to work at four in the morning in complete darkness or forced to work just to help their family because of the death in the family. Girls are forced to work by themselves with only boys and men and vice versa. These horrible jobs cause death, sickness, and severe damage. So she has right here her intro sentence. And then does she have her summary here? Yep, she did a great job summarizing, right? She answers the who, what, where, when, and why. Now she has her five facts. So here's her facts. Many children had to work 16 hours or more in bad conditions. Children ages 9 to 11 had to work 8 hours each day. In 1840, only 20% of children were in school. The rest were working. You might be like, woohoo, but... With school brings knowledge, knowledge brings power, power is privilege, which gives you opportunity, right? So everyone see a good example with this? So that's what I want yours to look like, okay? Um, if you want to, when you're taking the etymology quiz, I recorded myself reading it aloud. So if we go back, you click etymology quiz nine, so here I said, do you need the quiz read aloud? Click here to have it read to you. And you can listen to me pronouncing the words and reading it, okay? So here's what I'd like you to do. Take your etymology quiz. 
when you're done, I would like you to type in the chat box what topic you're going to choose to research. And then you can begin your research. Are there any questions? So do your etymology quiz, research, and then when everyone's done with the quiz, I'll kind of jump in and see where we're at, okay? So I'll be here. My mic and my camera will be off, but I need everybody to start their quiz. Good luck. Take your time. Use the audio. You're going to be great, okay? Any other questions? Okay, you guys can get started.